But the one thing I do understand is that the Father loves me. And it's comforting to know, not so much that I know God, but that God knows me. Paul and uh, welcome to our time together as we continue to look at uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Um, last week we learned that God one day will hold people to account for their lives but while it's important to live the best life we can we cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus has the power to make us friends with God to help us really know God. But you might say to me how can we know God? You know is it through books or being very intelligent? Well, let's see if our passage can help us to answer those questions today. So I'm going to read from Matthew 11 verses 25 to 30. At that time Jesus said, I praise you Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. Yes Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Okay, so how well can you know the Queen? I mean, there must be thousands of books written about her, so, you know, there's plenty to read, but I suspect if you had a 20 minute chat in private, you would probably have more revealed to you about the things that really matter to the Queen than you could ever read in all the books, even if you put them together. So when we read the Bible, we discover, perhaps not surprisingly, it is only Jesus who fully knows his Father, our God. Jesus tells us in our passage today, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. So Jesus, therefore, is the person who we must go to to help us know God. So when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, or when he performed wonders and signs, he knew that the people who heard what he said or saw the miracles that he performed had only a limited understanding of God, let alone who Jesus is. Now some of you know I love paintings, but did you know that my favourite artist is Turner? I have a book here, it's a bit battered because it's so well used. And that painting in, behind me was inspired by him. Well, all right, it's, it's no Turner. But imagine if Turner was asked to judge a beginner's art competition. And imagine if he really wanted to help people paint better. But when he shared his knowledge, he was not only rejected, but the beginners told him they knew more about painting than he did. Now, think how much more would Jesus have found it difficult, frustrating, especially when people not only misunderstood his teaching about God, but actually opposed him. Claiming in some cases that they knew more about God than God's own son. And yet his love for them will lead him to the cross to provide a way for them to become part of God's family, to become God's friends. To know God, you don't need to be the brainiest person or even have studied lots of books on Hebrew or Greek. You don't even need to visit the Holy Lands. Now, don't get me wrong, all those things are good, and, but none are essential or a requirement to knowing God. Verse 25 of our reading tells us, At that time Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and reveal them to little children. So you see, Jesus wanted people to understand that to know God, they need to come to him with a childlike trust, reliant on Jesus alone as the most important source of all we need to know about God. 
So when Jesus came to earth, he came to remind people of the claim that God had on human hearts. He came to repair human relationships that had been damaged in the Garden of Eden, to offer life instead of the judgment and death that had come from that fall. Jesus, however, is surrounded by people, as today, who live their lives without God. Even when sometimes those people claim to actually know God, the important people of the time Jesus spoke with seemed to reject the love and authority Jesus displayed through his ministry. However, in contrast, those who had so, so little, the poor, the sick, the people who were looked down upon by society, they became the very ones who most readily put their trust in Jesus. And Jesus was able then to reveal more to them about their loving God. Many, many then, and now would not accept Jesus' claim in verse 27 that all things have been committed to me by my Father. And yet that is despite all they had witnessed that Jesus had done. You see, Jesus becomes a window through which people could discover more about the living God. The living God is here with them in the flesh. And our passage provides a wonderful revelation to encourage us about what it means to follow Jesus. And this is what Jesus says to the people. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What an amazing offer. Jesus helping us with our troubles. So when Jesus asks us to lay down our burdens, he then asks us to take up his yoke, which is something to carry other burdens with. Does that seem strange? Well, it may help if you knew that keeping the law, including the Ten Commandments, was the focus of how Israel related and responded to God. And the law was sometimes referred to as a yoke. The problem was in a desire to try and keep God's laws, which was tough enough anyway, more rules, religious practices and traditions have been created. And as a result of all this burden, many merely tried to keep the laws and traditions as best they could, but had no heart to serve or really know the God they pointed to. However, hope is found in Jesus. When the burden of the law is removed at the cross, Jesus becomes the perfect sacrifice, the fulfillment of all that the law demands. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus becomes the source of our being made right with God. Our righteousness comes from trusting Jesus, not the law or ourselves. But Jesus refers to a new yoke, a yoke of love, not duty, a yoke that reflects God's love. The example of Jesus caring for others, having compassion, even for those who reject him. In many ways, the, the yoke of love is not easy and as such, it can be no less hard to carry. But Jesus knows that if we find it too hard, he will forgive us when we need to lay it down and rest. And he will be there by our side when we pick it up again to do his work. You know, life in God's service is not easy. It's not an easy choice. The world still presses in and Christians are not immune from the same problems everyone faces. But Jesus reveals to those who follow him that our burdens are shared with God because of his mercy and love for those who trust Jesus. Jesus draws back the curtain that divides us from God and encourages us to enter in to the very presence of a loving God. Knowing God is not about what you can learn so much as what you need to know. For me, I know that my name is always on God's mind. All I know about God comes from his part in my life. And he knows me better than even my wife does. He knows me as a friend. He's never too busy or distracted to listen to me, understand my needs and care for me. He knows all that is good about me and he knows all that is worst of me. And yet he wants me to be his friend. God has even given up his own son to die so that I am able to be God's friend. 
I'm not sure I can ever fully understand why God has chosen me and values me so much that he was willing to give up his son. Or why Jesus has called me to follow him. But the one thing I do understand is that the Father loves me. And it is comforting to know, not so much that I know God, but that God knows me. Last week was tough teaching on how we will face judgment. But here is the good news. If you trust Jesus, he will stand for you on that final day and you will be saved from death and from separation from God. Not because of what you have done, but because Jesus will wrap you in his own perfection and you will be adopted as God's child. Please, I implore you, if you have yet to accept Jesus as your saviour, do so now. Lay down your burden at Jesus' feet and pick up his call to serve God and to love those around you in Christ's name. I'm going to pray. Uh, and then then we'll finish. So let me pray. In John 14, Jesus told people, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Lord Jesus, we have failed you many times, but you have never failed us. We have rejected you, but you have never stopped loving us. Today we come to you as the source of all hope and knowledge of your Father's love and mercy towards us. Change our hearts today. Forgive us and renew us and help us through your Holy Spirit to live for you. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.